Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're talking about the new Trackit 3D Scanner from RevoPoint. So this is the new Trackit 3D Scanner, or I should probably say scanners because there's two bits to it. You get the overall scanner device itself, and then you have a second device, which is basically another scanner in many ways, that is the Trackit element, making this a dual system. And compared to other 3D scanners, this is really exciting. Because whereas normal 3D scanners work entirely off features or markers if you put on marker dots, the Trackit system doesn't. So let's just explain that quickly. And warning, here's some bad similes incoming, but this works for me in my head. So this is me scanning using the Range 2, also from RevoPoint. And you can see here it's scanning this object really nicely because this object is very feature rich. And that's the way the vast majority of 3D scanners work. They work off the scanner, picking up multiple features and using that to tell where it is. Similarly wise, it's like rock climbing. Ideally, you want to have yourself connected to the wall at three points, three features, and this allows the scanner to know where it is. If at any point you don't have those three points, you've got a good chance of flailing around wildly or falling off. Likewise, for a 3D scanner, you lose tracking and the scanner doesn't know where it is in three-dimensional space and you get a mismatched object and it looks horrible. Whereas having the separate track it module keeps track of where the scanner is, so it always knows where you are in three-dimensional space. And what this means is that the Trackit system can scan objects that normally you just wouldn't be able to scan because they're totally lacking in features, they're made up of flat surfaces. At least not without wasting your time putting on a million different markers. Now all of this technology does come at a price, and this probably isn't really designed for the standard home user, probably more big companies or small businesses. But even at its full price, and especially on the Kickstarter, which is going until the 10th of July, I just don't think you'll find this technology, probably ever, at such a reasonable price. Now, don't equate reasonable price with cheap. If we have a look at the two cases that they come with, they're this really heavy duty plastic with wheels on them. You can upgrade this to aluminium, but I'm not sure why I'd bother. And in the first case, you've got the track it module. You can see it's got these like eye lenses that are really far apart. So you can see them there. And that's to allow it to check where you are really accurately when you're holding the scanner. In the second box, equally as well padded and heavy duty. And in that you've got all the cabling as well as the marker board to calibrate it. I'll show that briefly in a second because it's really easy, like shockingly easy. And then in the layer below that, you've got the scanner itself and then everything is housed in this custom made foam so that you know that it's really well protected. Now you can upgrade these to aluminium cases, but with how good quality this is, I'm really not sure why you'd bother, but there is that as an option. Now I do want to talk about the calibration process, but I'm going to show it really quickly because it's kind of boring just because it's so easy. Everything is shown in really clear animations. You can see that on the left hand side. On the right hand side, you can see this is the result of me moving the scanner up and down. You can see it's got these really clear points of where to target for, and then it registers at each point. It's insanely easy. Then you get on to actually registering the track it itself, and that's similarly easy. The software gives these really nice diagrams of where the track it module is compared to where it needs to be. And then you can see me moving it around and it changes it in real time until you get everything lined up. And then it just does everything for you. It's all automated, so you don't have to worry about moving things around yourself. It does make it very, very easy and kind of difficult to get wrong. Now, obviously, I've sped this up, but you can see what I mean. Once you've got it in position, it is just all automated. It does everything itself, and then you change position, and it does the next test. It's really foolproof. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get on with actually doing some scanning and seeing what this can do. So this is going to be my first scan with the track it and everyone seems to be doing cars, which, well, you've seen that if you've looked at anything for the track it. Everyone seems to be doing cars. So I thought I'd actually do this box. I think this is really, really nice. It's the one that comes with the track it. I mentioned it earlier. And it's made up of loads of flat surfaces and repeating patterns that would make this really difficult to scan with a normal scanner, forgetting the fact that it's black, which makes it harder to scan already. So we're gonna give this a go and see how this works out. Now the track it is just behind the camera. I'm in a quite small room, so I'm a bit limited on space and I can't show everything all at once. 
But we're gonna give this a go and I'll talk through what settings I'm gonna do. This is actually the second time I've scanned anything. I was gonna do it straight off, doing it as my first ever scan, but I forgot to turn my mic on when I was filming it, which was stupid. Um, so there we go. So this is actually gonna be the second time I'm gonna scan, and there's actually a couple of buttons that I've learned that are quite useful, so I'll be able to show that off as well. So we're gonna make this relatively quick. We've got the track scan on, which is the standard scanning mode, and as this is mostly flat, I'm going to up the target point distance from 0 0.03 of a millimetre, which is excessive for a mostly flat box. Let's go with 0 0.8 millimetres, something like that. I'm hoping that's going to make this a bit quicker to scan, and also, as you can probably tell by the temperature, um, we're having a bit of a heat wave in the UK, and it is sinfully hot at the moment. So let's see how this does. So what we're going to do is keep everything the same, I think, but I am going to put this on object type as a black object, well, because it's a black box. We're not going to call it large. It's not a car or anything like that. Oh, and that's taken down the point distance. That's an annoying feature, but let's just move that back up. So let's put that to 0.8, just change this first. I'm going to keep it with the cross lines. The single line is for if you've got really like deep insets, and we should be okay without that. So, what I'll do is just start scanning. So what I'm gonna do is walk over to our object. Okay, and this, the track it now picks it up. There are two lights on the front of the track it which tells you if it's being seen by both of the eyes and hopefully this is gonna be okay. And I'm gonna try and get the distance right. So once we start scanning, we can't move this. That's really important and we can't move anything about it in this normal scan mode. But there is another mode, I'll show you this in another video, where you can actually change where either the track it is or the object is. So you can like rotate it around, which is really cool. Uh, this is quite deep, so I might have a bit of a problem scanning the back, and that's where that option is gonna really stand out. But let's just bring this over here, and I'm just gonna press the start button that's on the back, but before I do that, there's a button here, which puts it into widescreen mode, which makes it much easier to see. So, let's just start scanning. So here we go. And already it's picking up the side here, even though it should be quite difficult to pick that up. Not huge amounts of flat surface here, so it'd probably be okay. But look, if I just scan the table, this would normally be impossible with any sort of scanner. So I'm gonna look over here because I'm looking at my screen and what the scanning is doing. So that's why I'm not looking at the camera. We can start getting sort of the edge where we're getting this. And you can see how quickly because I've turned this to a slightly larger distance that we're getting all of this detail. So let's just rotate around here and try and get the sides and the edges and the corners of all of these. Now, it does look like we're able to pretty much have this facing away from the track it. That's no issue because it's picking up the dots that are on the side. I need to not get my hand in the way too much. And if I just move this here, you can see, look, it's like, it's so easy to not go wrong. Like, I'm just scanning. Even on, if I bring it to the top bit here, even on this flat bit, sorry, I moved the track it out of view of, or I moved the scanner out of view of the track it, but you can see, like, it just does all these flat bits that it shouldn't be able to do, or other scanners wouldn't be able to do, just really quickly and easily. Now, one thing I'll mention is I've got my light just sort of here, so that's possibly gonna make some of these corners, let me just move this out of the way here, a little bit tricky to get, but it doesn't seem to be having an issue with them. It seems to be getting them fine. So I've got no issue with this at all. I mean, this just, oh, it's just so easy. It's just so insanely easy to scan. You kind of can't really easily go wrong unless you really try to, I think. Let's see how we're doing there. That's looking pretty good. Let's get that top surface. Now I wanted to do this in real time so you've got an idea of how this works. I don't want to speed this up. So I'm just going to keep going on this. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now I'm just going to pause it and I'm just going to move around. So I'm just going to keep the wire moving and then we're just going to start here. And you'll notice this is where normally we'd have a problem. Like, and I'll actually start over here where I haven't scanned yet. And if I just turn this on, because the track it knows where I am, it just straight away goes to, yep, that's the correct place. And I can just start scanning. So in theory, I guess you could scan some really unrelated items, 
Um, like that are separated and then split them apart later. I'm not sure why you'd want to, but you might want to for some reason. Let's just swap hands and pull that round. Now, this does need to all be connected. So I've got the cable sort of trailing around here and that is not really an optional thing. I'm hoping I've got a 3D printer over there. Again, small room. And actually that doesn't appear to be getting in the way. Though there is a cable that sort of is going between the track it and the scanner, but I'm not seeming to have a problem with that. Now I'm actually gonna intentionally scan the table here, just so it gives me like a plane that I know this is the bit to cut off at the bottom to make that easy. Uh, let's try and get this corner. I sort of got in the way of the track it again with my arm. But again, pretty easy. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get all of the depth behind here and it's still gonna, actually no, look, it's still able to see the top of the scanner and work out where it is. I'm wondering if this is gonna cause more problems. But like I said, there's a mode to deal with this and I'll do that in the next video where we would actually be able to rotate the object around or move the scanner around. There we go, so that was me getting the scanner below where the track it could see. So if we had a bigger space, what I'd be able to do is actually move the track it like over here so it can now see everything and just start scanning again. And we'll talk through how to do that. But the option I'm gonna use, again, small room, is we can also use it or this mode to actually just move the object around. And then the scanner will work out how you've moved the object around. Let's just pause this for a second and then just move that cable around. So the track it can basically follow this object as you rotate it round and then know where you're scanning from. So it basically tracks both this and the object. It's such a cool mode. Let's just start this scanning again. Um, yeah, I'll show you that in the next video. I think that's a really, really fun option. And I'm gonna be honest, oh, see, there we go. This is me going a little bit out of line of sight because of that 3D printer that's over there. And that's causing problems. And you'll notice I can rotate the track it round and it doesn't cause any problems because again, it's got all of the, the tracking dots on this like carbon fiber. I'm assuming it's carbon fiber. It looks like carbon fiber frame. There we go. So again, it starts going, no, we don't like this. I can't see the scanner when I'm getting a little bit over here and getting in the way. Now, the main thing is to keep off to the side. Oh, I'm a bit far away. There we go. So let's keep off to the side so that I'm not getting in the way between me and the track it module. Where are we now? Let's get over here. Just fill that bit in. I mean, like, you just can't really go wrong with it. And this is me sort of looking at the screen every so often, but not perfectly so. Let's go over there. Now, what I'm gonna do is pause this and come over to this side. Start scanning again and again, no issues. And we can just start filling that in. And I might even, if I go down a bit, just trying to make sure that the module can still see this. It is nice that you've got these like two blue lights on the top of the track it, so it says if one of the eyes can't see you, which is pretty handy. So we're getting all of this, all of the detail under there. Um, am I gonna get, now obviously the table's in the way here. I probably should have pulled this up to the edge to get some of the bits under there, but we can sort of drag this through here, getting all the detailing there, but the software Revo Point software is really nice. I've got a separate video on that. I'm not gonna show the software working because it's just showing the same thing and that gets really boring, but all of the holes will get filled in. I shouldn't put my finger in front of it. You can see some of the extra bits where I've done that and the, it sort of picked up my hand. So let's get that bit there. And let's get some of the bits here that are a bit more reflective because of the light that's just up there. I mean, yeah. So I'm gonna, oh, let's get, that sort of edge there, and that edge there. Okay, and with that we're done. So let's come out of that widescreen mode and we're just gonna come over and click complete. Now, this is the RevoScan software. As I said, I'm not gonna cover this in huge amounts of detail, but I do wanna show how this comes up and how quick this is to do different things. I'll just time skip all of the processing parts because it's not really showing anything and show you the end result as well. 
this is no different to the normal RevoScan software. As I said, I've got a video on that. Feel free to check that out and how this works. So I'm going to start by just fusing these points together. Again, I've sped this up and you can see it's going to give a really nice result. It gets rid of a lot of the extraneous data and you can see straight away how good this is. We've got very little to do, just some holes that we're going to need to fill in and the software will do this. Most of the holes are to the back where I didn't really scan it particularly well. That's because I'm actually not intending to use the back of this. I don't want it to have a hinge and I'm going to use this to make some scenery. So I'm actually just going to mirror this across in Blender. So I really didn't care about the back. As I said, I'm going to do a video on how to use the mode where you can move the object around and I'll try and do that for the next video. But yeah, a few holes, nothing really problematic here. They're all flat points and they're all on the deepest parts and where I was, well, not really scanning that well because I was trying to record a video at the same time as doing the scanning. A few moments later. So I really don't want to waste your time going through all this. So here's the final result with holes filled. I've done nothing by use the Revo scan software at this point, and it's all just fully automated clicking options to get the holes filled. And you can see the result of this and make your own mind up. But as I said, you just can't scan flat surfaces like this. And this is far from an ideal set of circumstances. It's a black object, which this can scan perfectly well in some quite harsh lighting so I could get the filming done and in a temperature where the scanner probably doesn't really want to be working at that high temperature because it's the UK and for some god awful reason we don't have air conditioning anywhere. But I think the result of this speaks for itself. It's absolutely fantastic capturing all the fine details on all of those skinny little segments that I use to support this box. Now this genuinely was the first time I got through scanning this whole box. The first time I tried I only got about a quarter of the way through before I realised my mic was off. But I really think I could do a better job actually with another scan. I'd do this a lot more systematically and not be trying to simultaneously record a video while scanning. Now if I wanted to make this really easy, you can actually get an arm that does this all automatically. And for objects around this size, it would be absolutely perfect. But I'm going to be honest, I think that's just an element that's far too far out of my price range. But again, if you're a small business and this is within budget, it's going to make life a lot easier. Also, there's something about it that just reminds me of the movement of a pretty classic 80s film. I'll be impressed if anyone can name that. Anyway, there's a link in the description to the Kickstarter if you are interested in the Track It. That's not an affiliate link, it's just there to make it easier for you to find. If you are watching this after the Kickstarter has ended, there will be a link to the Revo Point shop instead. That one will be an affiliate link and there will be some discount codes there if I've got any available to me at the time. But I'll be perfectly clear, it's never going to be as cheap as it is on the Kickstarter. So if you're interested, that's the place to get it. I thought I'd just finish with the results of the 3D print of this scan. I did mirror this across in Blender to get rid of the hinges as I said I would, but I think it's so fun that we can do this with technology nowadays and relatively easily at that. As I said I will do another video using this in the other scan mode so you can check this out as well. So if you aren't subscribed to the channel, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you know when that video is out. Hopefully see you in the next one and have a great day.